Well, we're back on the Shell Toey again. Kinda. On October 31st, 2020, I awoke before dawn and drove 80 miles east from my home in Lexington to the northern terminus of the Sheltoe Trace National Recreational Trail to embark on an unorthodox hiking challenge that had been on my mind since completing my thru-hike back in June. Since the thru-hike, I have been itching to complete the unofficial 20-mile segment that runs from the terminus to the Ohio River marking a border-to-border -border trek across our beloved bluegrass state. So once again, I geared up and teamed up with my trail brother Nick, and we started our chilly road walk along Kentucky Highways 377, 344, and 59 en route to Vanceburg. All right, so one of the things that I wanted to do on this trip between the Northern Terminus and the state line at Vanceburg was to give a space to collect my thoughts uh, about our through hike now that I've had four months now to think and reflect and meditate on it. First thing I wanted to say, like officially, like my epilogue thoughts is that a through hike like this really is an imprinting experience on your life. And I, I would say that on a general level, I have a bad memory. Like I can do something and then forget the details surprisingly fast afterwards. And our 20 days on trail, Nick and I together, we'll be talking about something and he'll bring up, you know, a super duper nuanced memory about something that happened on whatever particular day on trail. And I just had this vivid flashback of what happened that day and how I was feeling and everything. And I don't, I don't have that experience with too many things in my life. And so, oh no, <laughs> we got some dogs on a road walk. Anyways, if you want something that really is going to last a lifetime in terms of your ex memory and experience, highly recommend it. Is this Heidelberg or what? Hi puppies. Hi puppy. All right, another closing thought on our through hike of the Sheltoe Trace has to do with the difficulty of the trail. 
recently I've seen a few comments in passing on some social media platforms about people getting ready to do their through hike of the trace and saying that it shouldn't be too bad of a challenge but I think Nick and I would disagree um, yeah the elevation for the entire trip it's much lower than other trails like the AT or the PCT I think we did probably around 40 or 41,000 feet of elevation gain over 350 miles but the way that certain sections are maintained it's no disrespect to the association or anything it's just it's a lot of miles to cover with not a lot of help I mean I think that the conditions are similar to probably the way that Daniel Boone <laughs> traveled when he cut part of that road through that area I mean with the horse traffic and you know slippery rocks and having to ford so many water systems I mean it just made it for a tough tough trip to you know mentally and physically endure so I mean it makes me me and Nick proud that we were able to do that because I mean I think it is a, a challenging trail that's going to put you to the test for sure Oh Lord. Ah! Oh, we met some friends. Hi, puppy. Hi, puppy. Ah! Ah! Get it's done, got bright out. I got to put the sunglasses on because I'm squinting too much, but another reflection that I want to solidify on the through hike is the opportunity for remoteness on the Sheltoe and Kentucky in general. I think that especially down in the Big South Fork, you know, pretty much all 50 miles in Tennessee and then all the way up through uh, Yamacraw portion, some of the most remote feelings of being on trail in Kentucky other than like Pine Mountain along the Cumberland Plateau on the eastern Kentucky-Virginia border. Barron Fork, that's another part of the Sheltoe that felt remote. I mean, you were just, as the New Zealanders say, you were in the bush. And it's kind of a, it's a humbling and it's an invigorating feeling to feel so removed from civilization. And it's just really awesome that Kentucky has that for you to experience. So definitely recommend the through hike if you want some remoteness down in the south. Here we are with another dress change. <laughs> Got hot again, so I had to remove the beanie and put on a hat. We just had lunch at Lewis County Park. We're a little up past halfway to Vanceburg, which is great. Um, been thinking another reflection on the through hike that I wanted to make people aware of is just stressing the importance of mental toughness, emotional toughness when you're undergoing a challenge like a through hike of a 300 plus mile trail. I think Nick and I both can agree that you can train, you know, all day long as much as you want physically and that is going to help to a certain degree. It's so important to command your mind. Oh lord, lord, lord. <laughs> Another which way? <laughs> 
ignore and overcome things Water. like weather. <laughs> this is the worst. <laughs> the absolute worst. Like I was saying, you're going to have to command your mind to overcome things like bad weather, uh, terrible body odor, odor and stinky and wet clothes, dealing with aches and pains, being away from friends and family in your home. Um, that was the biggest challenge for Nick and I. I think that our bodies were okay for the most part. Our, our minds were really attacking us on trail and there were a couple points where our minds almost got the best of us. So just letting you know, not enough people talk about it. Mental toughness, so important. All right, we got a little candid action going on here. Got the trail brother, Nick, Smokey B's natural. I posed the question to him, what was his favorite thing, favorite aspect of the through hike? Nick, take it away. There's a car coming. Oh, Lord. <laughs> the cars. <laughs> take two. Take two. All right, same question. Favorite part, favorite thing about the through hike? So, this was a tough one because there's like so many cool things that happen. You know, um, all the ups and downs and pain and the, you know, just the rough days and the good days. But I think the, my favorite thing was just the cutting up with each other, having a good time making jokes all day, just the whole brotherhood of having someone to hang out with all day to go through that experience with. So, like I said earlier, I think that there are many of, that's what she said jokes and, you know, teasing each other, so it's a good old time. He brings, brings up a good point. When you spend 20 straight days with someone and you're, you know, permanently attached to them, like in every aspect when you're hiking, there's a, a bond that's gonna be created that it's gonna be pretty deep and lasting. So definitely agree with them in that. So that's why we call each other trail bros, cause we mean it. It's right. every bit true. So good answer, Nick. All right, and the final thing I wanted to bring up on this epilogue journey to the Ohio River is my top 10 list of my top 10 favorite parts of all the miles we covered on the Shell Toey. Not the cars. Not the cars, exactly. So, lots of things I left out. If I left it out, it means it was either not significant enough to bring up or it was bad enough <laughs> that it didn't deserve to be in the top 10. First one I'm going with is in my only honorable, honorable mention. And the reason is it's technically not a trail-like experience. And that's the Heidelberg March. 20 mile road walk similar to this, but it was absolutely beautiful walking through the mountainous countryside, seeing, you know, ridges from far away, uh, getting to see, you know, the houses and how people grow up in that area, conveniently country and everything. Uh, we were pleasantly surprised at how well that day went. So that's my honorable mention. Number 10 on the list is the cave run section. And the reason that this is the bottom of the list is because the condition of the trail was very, very, very rough. Post holing, mud pits the size of small cars. It made our pace and momentum go down to a slog. It was just so rough and oh. I just wanted to get over it. This, this is crazy. We're gonna die. It's Halloween. All right, number nine on the list of my top 10 is the Laurel River Lake section. Lots of reasons why this is on the bottom tier of the list. Oh my gosh. Uh oh, frick. Oh. Lots of reasons why this is the bottom tier of the list for me. Um, there were so many people that day on the lake and we had just come out of a real remote, remote section which made it uh, difficult and kind of a shock to see. Um, the campsites were kind of trashed, lots of garbage everywhere, not to mention Nick's food bag got stolen which still is kind of a fresh wound for us. But the lake itself is really pretty. Water is super clear and the trails are graded really nicely so not all bad. 
number eight on the list is the section that runs through Moorhead, through Moorhead State University, Eagle Lake, all the way to the terminus. I think Moorhead is a quaint little town, super clean. I think it was pleasant to walk through and get some town food. That's a requirement every now and then on a through hike. Eagle Lake is stunning. I think it's a Colorado worthy lake almost. Um, and then just the anticipation of being done, being that close to the end is really exciting and brings the emotions and the spirits up. Number seven on the list is going through Red River Gorge. And many of you may be thinking, what the crap, Samuel? How is an area like that on the bottom half of your list? And the reason is, you would think that a through hike, a, a trail like the Sheltoe would go through more of the highlights of the trail. Like you see more arches or more overlooks. And all we really saw was Indian arch. We saw Indian staircase over at a distance. So, I mean, it's always great being in the gorge, but when you're hiking that many miles, I just wish I could have seen more. Number six on my list is actually Natural Bridge State Park. So it's kind of a similar version of Red River Gorge, but you actually get to see things on this part of the trail. You get to see the bridge, of course, and then there was uh, the Narrows, which is also White's Branch Art, which is amazing. So cool of a scramble and an overlook and everything. So if, if all of the gorge was like that, it'd probably be number one, but yeah, Natural Bridge. All right, we're in the top five now. Number five is the Yahoo Falls section of the Sheltoe. I recall being able to walk along just these ginormous rock walls and then being able to end up at Kentucky's highest waterfall at 130 feet. And that canyon underneath the falls was just absolutely spectacular. Being able to have a snack there that morning was great. The water was flowing well that day. Baby Yoda on the back of the <laughs> <laughs> My gosh, there's gonna be so many bloopers on this video. Anyways, Yahoo Falls, great pick for number five. Number four on my list is the Peters Mountain, Kentucky Trail reroute, Blue Heron area of the Big South Fork. Uh, this didn't used to be part of the Shell Toy, but they rerouted it to uh, dissolve some property issues going on, private property, but that section is super remote Bear. yeah and that made one of the best moments of the whole trip is seeing that that bear eat that deer definitely check that video out yeah but that section has a lot of nice amount of challenge to it um the remoteness is great the beauty is great you get to walk through Coger arch it's all around a great section in my opinion all right we're in the top three Number three for me is the Barren Fork section. This is just south of Cumberland Falls State Park. That particular day, the night before, super rough. It was raining on us. We were just in really bad moods. But the next morning, after the rain had dissipated some, it, it, it felt almost like a Kentucky rainforest. The vegetation is so lush. There's so much moss growing in that area uh, along that water system, which is the Barren Fork. I remember the pine trees there being so large. And then it was also one of the few times I felt so separated from humanity. So Barren Fork, number three for me. All right, number two on the list is the section between Cumberland Falls State Park and Dog Slaughter Falls along the Cumberland River. Uh, being able to arrive at Cumberland Falls after hiking 120 miles, one of the most monumental feelings of accomplishment I've ever felt in my life. And I mean, who, who doesn't like Cumberland Falls, largest in the state? And then the trail along the river to Dog Slaughter is really technical. It almost reminds me of some hiking like in the White Mountains in New Hampshire or in Maine. Really difficult and challenging, but going off trail a quarter mile to Dog Slaughter Falls, like a family classic with my upbringing. It was just a perfect day uh, to see both of those waterfalls and so recommend that section of the trail. Even if you're not through hiking, just like a day hike, it's wonderful. All right, and number one, 
My most favorite part of the Sheltoe Trace is the portion of the John Muir Trail in the Tennessee section of the Big South Fork from the southern terminus at Burnt Mill Bridge all the way to the John Muir Overlook. I think Nick and I both agree that those first two days, three. first three days were some of the best of the entire trip. The weather was perfect. Those geological features that we were walking underneath are unlike any I've seen. Um, the clear fork that we walked beside looked like something out of the Rocky Mountains. Uh, those overlooks that we got to the top of after climbing in the valleys for two days, spectacular. I felt separated from, you know, establishment. It was really remote. I felt like I was in a wilderness, unlike right now. Um, so I, I plan on going back and re-hiking that section. It was so beautiful. So please, please, please hike that section of the, of the Sheltoe. It's so worth it. Yeah, probably wouldn't recommend this though. We're crazy. We uh, did it! Woo! We have hiked the entire state of Kentucky from border to border. 300-ish miles with the Sheltoe and 20 miles today. I have no idea how much elevation we gained. I'll try to look, up, look it up and throw it down here, but it was a wild day. Got up to almost 70, which is awesome. Last oh, yeah. day in October. We almost got killed several times by cars, so... I don't know if I'd recommend this, but we're crazy. We live life on the edge, or we try to at least, but it's a, it's a great feeling to have our home state hiked through. So on to the next state, right? Oh, yeah. Let's do it. So until next time, though, make sure you like, subscribe, send me a comment, and until next time, get outside, folks. It'll do you some good. We'll talk to you later.